Welcome to our lecture, the Labor Market Impact Assessment, LMIA. What is a Labor Market Impact Assessment? A Labor Market Impact Assessment, LMIA, is a document that an employer in Canada may need to get before hiring a foreign worker. A positive LMIA will show that there is a need for a foreign worker to fill the job. It will also show that no Canadian worker is available to do the job. A positive LMIA is sometimes called a confirmation letter. If the employer needs an LMIA, they must apply for one. Once an employer gets the LMIA, the worker can apply for a work permit. The program has multiple streams, including high skill, low skill, caregiver, primary agriculture, and film and entertainment. LMIAs can also be used as an instrument to support an application for permanent residence. So, the process that the employers use in Canada to hire foreign workers based on LMIA is the following. The employer will be posting jobs in the job bank and other recognized platform for job, and will interview a documented all the recruitment process. Once the process is completed, they're going to fill out the forms that are required and pay the required fees to Service Canada, and then after an assessment, normally it takes a few months, if everything goes well, the Service Canada will issue a positive LMIA. And the LMIA, most of the cases, will have the name of the foreign worker that have been hired. In more detail, for better understanding, this is the process. The Canadian employer needs a em new employee. They're going to start to do a, a recruitment process, posting jobs and ads in different places. If they cannot find a suitable Canadian candidate and permanent resident, but find a, an applicant from abroad, a foreign worker, then they can issue an offer of employment. The question comes, is that offer of employment near an LMIA? If it's yes, then they can hire the foreign worker through the temporary foreign worker program. We we'll need to choose the LMI category in which the employee is going to be hired and then apply for LMIA. If they don't need an LMIA, they're going to hire them through the International Mobility Program. And we will see more details in the next slide. For the employer, they need to choose the right program for you. The Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, offer two programs that allow international talent to be hired as temporary foreign workers to fill temporary labor and skill shortages. They are the International Mobility Program, IMP, and the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, TFWP. In the case that the LMIA is needed, the employer needs to choose the category in which it will apply. LMIA have two main categories. The higher skill occupations, which can be high wage positions and low wage positions, and the lower skill occupations, that can also be the high wage position and low wage positions. The wages positions, it will be what determined based on the market, based on the information in the province, normally through the job bank, and based on the requirements. The high skill and low skill is depending on the occupation, the requirement for the occupation. So these are the categories that the employer need to take into consideration and determine before they can do an application for LMIA. So these categories are two categories. Again, just to refresh, the LMIA has two categories, the higher skill occupations and lower skill occupations according to the National Occupational Classification, NOC. Higher skill occupations include NOC skill type 0, skill level A and B occupations. Lower skill occupations include NOC skill level C and D occupations. Each of these categories has two subcategories, high wage, low skill positions and low wage, high skill positions. If we follow the median hourly wages by province or territory that is posted by the Government of Canada, we can see the difference by 
provinces um, based on the date prior to April 29 when the changes were made and from April 29, 2017. And what you see is the difference, 2538 in that time, 2586 depending on when the LMA is applied in time when the position uh, is required. But basically that's the guideline province by province, you will see the difference. And of course, that's the median hourly wage. You need to take consideration also the occupation uh, in, in question when it comes to LMA evaluation. If the wage offered by the employer is below the median hourly wages, then uh, highly likely that the LMA won't be approved. You need to meet all the requirements by the position and by the wages standards when it comes to the approval of the LMA. High wage positions are offered study at or above the provincial territorial median hourly wage. Employers hiding under this category must provide a transition plan. This is very important. A transition plan is necessary in, this, in these uh, circumstances. Planning to ensure future human resources needs without using the temporary foreign worker program. The idea is that, yes, if the employer is authorized to hire a foreign worker, it can do so as far as they have a transition plan, which means that the Canadian employer won't depend on the temporary foreign worker program for future growth or future opportunity. The plan is that that foreign worker is just help with the skill shortage in that moment, but that that situation will improve if you're to hire Canadians and permanent residents. The transition plan should describe activities the employers are agreeing to undertake to recruit, retain, and train Canadians and permanent residents and to reduce their reliance on the temporary foreign worker program. Anything that is included in the transition plan can be audited. And at a later date, therefore, it is important to follow through on the initiative included in the plan. It's not just a fill in the blank. Everything that is put in that plan has to be followed because you can be audited any time. The employer can be audited, and when they not comply with the, with the audit, that's when they get into trouble. So in the best benefit of the employers and the foreign workers, this transition plan has to be viable and realistic. Low wage positions are offered a salary below the provincial territorial median hourly wage. Employers hiring under this category are subject to a cap on the proportion of foreign workers employed at a specific work location. When it comes to low wage positions, they are low in consideration with the provincial median hourly wage, but in those cases, they are going to have some limitations, some cap, so the employer cannot hire as many as they want, but in proportion to the, the general workforce that works in the company. 10% cap is a norm if they have not hired any foreign worker in low wage position prior to June 20, 2014. And 20 10% cap is if they have hired foreign workers in low wage position prior to June 20, 2014. Those are the cap imposed on the programs. LMA fees and processing times. The application fee for LMA request is now 1,000 Canadian dollars per worker. If you ever wonder why not many employers like to use the way of going through the LMA process, one of the reasons is the high cost that represent. Of course, if the employer really needs you, and they have a real need, they will go through that. But just understand that the process of LMA is not a pleasant process for employers in Canada. Not only not every employer knows about the process, but also they have to face the cost of this process. LMA processing time can be somewhat unpredictable, and LMA process can range from a couple of weeks to a few months, depending on the location, the position, the need, of, of the employer. 
Employment and Social Development Canada, ESDC, has pledged to process certain LMI applications within 10 business days. So there are certain, okay, certain uh, pe cases when they will expedite the application. The following categories will now be processed with a 10 business day service standard. All LMI applications for the highest demand occupations, skilled trades, highest paid top 10% of occupations, short duration work periods, 120 days of less, the process overview. Once the employer receives the LMIA, the potential employee can apply for a work permit as long as he or she has a job offer letter, a contract, a copy of the LMIA, and the LMIA number. The top five reasons for LMIA refusal, as you can find the, uh, on the internet, are insufficient or inadequate recruitment efforts, no continuous advertising or erroneous NOC code analysis. If the employer didn't document it right, if the employer didn't advertise enough, or if the employer used the wrong NOC, then that's a reason for LMIA to be refused. No meeting the prevailing wage, believe it or not. Some employ kindly employers might make a mistake of not putting the right prevailing wage as we saw before, they have to meet the requirements and check what the industry or the market is paying for that position and also the median average uh, wages in the province when the job will be located. Incomplete application is another reason. Uh, signatures, dates, uh, blank lines in, in, in the form. There's uh, a few reasons. That's why the application has to be through though, have to be checked several times for several people to make sure that every information that is requested is included and all the supporting documents are included in the application. No meeting programs requirements. Again, the first thing you need to do, the employer, to make sure that they understand all the requirements of the program and also the employee, the uh, potential foreign worker, also meet their the requirement for the immigration program. Ill preparedness for the interview. Sometimes there will not be an interview. The employer can be interviewed if there's any doubt. Or also the foreign worker can be interviewed. But in this case, because we're talking about LMA, we focus on the employer. And if they're not ready for the interview, they can also uh, sustain and, uh, and prove that the real need for the foreign worker to be higher, then that's another reason for the MI to be refused. And this is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much.